Praise the Lord. If you are strong as I am, I said, Praise the Lord. Can we rise up once again as we pray? Father, we thank you at this time. We bless your name for your people. What a glorious chance we have that we gather together from many nations and uh, from many states and regions in this country. Thank you, Lord, because of these giants of faith, champions of faith, and the people you've laid your hands upon. And Lord, for us to be able to even minister to such a crowd like this, a crowd of giants and champions. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity. And we thank you for all these brethren you have raised up, men and women. Lord, we pray, even though they are strong, make them stronger. Yeah. Even though they are conquerors, make them more than conquerors. Yeah. And we pray that today you will inject into every one of us something greater Amen. something higher Amen. something deeper Amen. than what we ever had before in jesus name Amen. this day magnify yourself in every brother and every sister Amen. thank you lord for the answer in jesus name we pray Amen. thank you very much we can sit down joshua chapter 3 Verse 7. In Joshua chapter 3 verse 7. And the Lord said unto Joshua. This day. Will I begin to magnify thee. In the sight of all Israel. That they may know. That as I was with Moses. So I will be with thee. We're looking at the message. This day experiencing the impossible this day think about that the impossible experiencing the impossible when Zacchaeus heard about Jesus and then he made up his mind and then he began to find out where Jesus will be passing through and then he ran to start with, for a great man, for a rich man, for a notorious man, for a popular man, to be running on the street, that's the impossible. And then to look at a tree, and climb that tree, and be looking only in one direction, in the direction in which Jesus will come. That's the impossible. And then for Jesus to wait right there. And to say, Zacchaeus, come down. I must abide in your house today. And Zacchaeus experienced the impossible. Think about Saul of Tarsus. This one that became Paul. A lion in the heart, destructive, ferocious, going to every house to take any man, any woman that he could find, and then commit him into the prison, commit her in the prison, into the prison, and then having a letter in his hand to go to Damascus. Anybody he found there, he had dealt with them in Jerusalem and had scattered them. And now he said, the next place will be Damascus. And then for the light to shine from heaven. And then for him to fall on the ground. And then to become blind. And then to hear the voice of the Lord. Saul, Saul. I know your name. I know your nature. I know your ambition. I know your desire. I know the destructive path you are following. Saul, Saul. Who is that calling my name? Who are you, Lord? I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. And it is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. What shall I do, Lord? Go to Damascus. And then... When he got there, he became a brother for an enemy to become a friend, a friend of the church. For an opposer 
to become a disciple, a disciple of Christ, for a lion to become a lamb. That's a miracle. The impossible. And Saul experienced the impossible. When you, like Zacchaeus, when all your heart, all your focus, all your mind, all your intention, all your attention is based on Christ. And you are running. You want to see Christ. Christ in his glory. Christ in his beauty. Christ in his power. Christ in his manifestation. That's experiencing the impossible. And for Christ to come to the place you are. Like he came to the place where Zacchaeus was. And to call your name. And to say, I must abide in your house. Not that house. In this house. In your house. In your heart. Remember once again, you are the house. You are the temple. I, in my glory, in my power, I, in my transforming virtue, I must abide in your heart, in your house today, experiencing the impossible. And then for you, you've been a lion at heart by nature and by training, by personal attribute. And by practice, you've been a lion. And there you are going on the way. Having this great intention to destroy and to scatter. And then for Jesus to meet you and, and arrest you on the way. And mention your name. Saul, Saul. You thought you already got a kind of work you are going to do for the rest of your life you've committed yourself already it's like you enter into a covenant with a cult the cult of destroying christianity the cult of destroying the glory of christ and the body of christ the cult of scattering the people of god you thought you already had an ambition a work, an assignment, a duty, a responsibility. And you are in the forefront of that career of the cult. And then for the Lord to meet you by the way and mention your name. Saul, Saul, I have another assignment for you. I have another responsibility for you. And then for you to now have a change. That the lion on the inside becomes a lamb. That's the impossible. Experiencing the impossible. And that's what we're looking at this day. Experiencing the impossible. Come back to this Joshua again. Joshua chapter 3. Verse 7. And the Lord said unto Joshua, This day. I want you to follow that, those words first, before we even move on. This day, in Joshua chapter 4, verse 14. On that day, the Lord magnified Joshua in the sight of all Israel. And they feared him, as they feared Moses. All the days of his life, he experienced the impossible. You know, they say, how can you get into the big man's shoes? Look at Moses. And look at the way the Lord exalted his ministry. The power that was manifested in his ministry. And then when Moses was going, God said, you hand over to Joshua. And Joshua must have been thinking... How can you step into the shoes of Moses? These people are not going to respect me. They are not going to accept me. Like they accepted Moses. They are not going to bend. They are not going to bow. They are not going to submit. Like they submitted to Moses. And then God gave him the impossible. This day, this day, on that day, what God did made him to experience the impossible. In Deuteronomy chapter 2 verse 25. Deuteronomy chapter 2. Reading from verse 25. This day, that is it. This day will I begin to put the dread of thee and the fear of thee upon the nations that are under the whole heaven. I'll make Israel 
to experience such power and such divine manifestation and touch that the whole of all the world, all the countries, all the nations under heaven I'll put the dread and the fear of Israel in their hearts. And then he said, and he said, it's this day, this day will I begin to put the dread of thee and the fear of thee upon the nations that are under the whole heaven who shall hear report of thee and shall tremble and be in anguish because of thee this day. And as you look at yourself, what are the things you have thought impossible in your life? Experiencing the impossible as you begin to think about it. Maybe there is a particular nature that you have. A particular attitude that you have. A particular direction you are following. And it's like your soul. It's like you are a person going the opposite direction. And there's this lion-like attitude. Oh, but you say we're leaders. Yes, I know. Yes, I know. I want to tell you this. There is a Judas and a John in every heart. A Judas and a John in every heart. You'll discover that. And when you, it's when you overlook the Judas and you stab the Judas and you don't pay attention to the Judas, then the Judas in you will die because you stab him to death. And then you're feeding the John on the inside. You're paying attention to the John on the inside. You are giving liberty, freedom to the John on the inside to grow, to speak, to love, to be kind, to be gentle. You're giving attention to the John on the inside to manifest its nature. That's when you will be the kind of man that what Lord wants you to be in the kingdom. But if you starve the John, the John is there inside. If you starve him, if you neglect him, if you overlook him, and you pay attention to the Judas on this side, it's the one you feed that will grow. But when you come to the Lord, and then the Lord takes the nature of the lion away from you, it's time to death. That's impossible. The Judas is knocked down, crushed, and conquered. It's there, but you knock it down. You make it dead. And it is then you experience the impossible. This day, experiencing the impossible. And then the lion in you is gone. And then there is a lamb that is coming up, gentle and loving, controllable and teachable, submissive like a sacrifice. And when you find yourself, that is the lion that is in manifestation. You see, looks like the Judas in me is the one that is growing. And the John in me is the one that is dying. But experiencing the impossible. We're told in for Samuel chapter 17. This day, for Samuel chapter 17. I'm reading from verse 46. For Samuel 17, verse 46. This day, you see that? Experiencing the impossible. This day, this day, will the Lord deliver thee into my hand. And I will smite thee and take thine head from thee. And I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel this day 
You see, when you open yourself to the Lord, and you give yourself to the Lord, and then there is fear and faith in everyone. Fear and faith in everyone. If you starve the fear, it will die. If you overlook the fear, it will die. If you abandon the fear, it will die. If you say, fear, I will not talk to you. I will not fellowship with you. I will not give you attention. I will not listen to you. I'm not going to feed you with any thought and any idea. If you start the fear, it will die. And then the faith, it's in everyone. The fear is there, the fear is there. But if you overlook it, if you don't feed it, if you neglect it, if you starve it, it will die. And then you're feeding the faith. You're communicating with the faith. You're putting the promises into the heart and the faith is growing. The fear will die and the faith will grow. But if you overlook the faith, if you neglect the faith, then the faith will die and the fear will grow in this case now david experiencing the impossible and he said this day this day he was feeling his face and his fear was dying but you know the story of david a time came he began to overlook the face starve the face and the face died and then he was paying attention to the fear. Saul will one day kill me. As all these things are going on, what am I? He was feeling his fear. What am I going to do now? He was feeling his fear. I think I'll go to Achish. I think I'll go to the heathen, to the pagans, and escape from the hands of they saw he was feeling his fear and then when he got to the place he was going the people said it's not this david saw servant and they sang david has killed his thousands and then just uh, saul has killed these few people he became afraid he was feeling his fear and then he had he had allowed his speech or whatever to be on his face and was acting like you know grabbing like a madman and he became he began to dramatize who knew that david was a dramatist before until he began to feed his fear. Who knew that David was a theater, a kind of a champion before? Who knew that was an actor before? It was when he was feeding his fear that all that came out. It's there. The fear is there. The faith is there. And it's the one you feed that will grow. And it's the one you starve that will die. But then, at this time, was feeling his faith. And then he said, this day, the Lord will deliver you into our hands. This day, experiencing the impossible. In Luke chapter 4, verse 21, this day. Luke chapter 4, verse 21. And he began to say unto them, this day see that again for you to think about the fulfillment of the age long prophecies concerning christ the fulfillment this day for you to think about the manifestation of the power of the living god through the messiah this day for you to see that what i saw you had reaching 700 years before this time Christ came, he appeared and showed up in the temple. And then he gave the book of the prophet Isaiah to him. And he opened the place where it was written concerning him. And then he began to read. And all the eyes of the people were fasting on him. And then he began to tell them, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. The word of God will be fulfilled in your life. The conversion, spectacular conversion, experiencing the impossible, the sanctification, the holiness, the changing of the lion to the lamb, the removal of the Adamic nature of the stony heart, and then the putting in the heart of flesh and the writing of the law of God upon the tables of our heart. This day experiencing the impossible. I divide the message to three parts. Number one, 
expressing the improbable by faith. Expressing the improbable by faith. Number two. Expecting the incredible by faith. Expecting the incredible by faith. Number three. Experiencing the impossible by faith. Experiencing the impossible by faith. We come to Joshua chapter three. We're backing up to verse 6. I'm reading from verse 6 all through to verse 10. Expressing the improbable. Expressing the improbable. Is that probable? Can that happen? Expressing it. And it's one where faith will be able to express the improbable by faith. Joshua chapter 3 verse 6. And Joshua spake unto the priest, saying, he was not going to express saying. He was not going to express declaring. He was not going to express telling them. And you will see, what he told them was very much improbable. Saying, take up the ark of the covenant. And pass over before the people. And he took up the ark of the covenant. And went before the people. He said, take up. And he took up. Take up. And he took up. Joshua, how do you see that? That these people did not even say why. Why is it now? Why must we take up the ark? Give me more details. Tell me more. Joshua, you're already experiencing the impossible. And he said, yes, I know. I never knew. You know, when you grow up with other people, especially you grow up with Caleb. And Caleb knows everything you know. And Caleb was as respected as you have been respected in the assembly. And Caleb knows the history. From the time of coming out of Egypt until the time that they were now to enter into the land of Canaan. And Moses, our leader, had already commended Caleb, in the presence of everybody, he was a popular figure among them. And yet, this Joshua did not even call Caleb apart and say, Caleb, can we consult before I tell the priest, before I tell the officers? He didn't even talk about that to him. He didn't even mention his name. I cannot find Caleb here. And for Caleb to sink himself into the assembly, Joshua, the Lord has raised you up. And we're following. Take up the ark. And everybody took up the ark. All the people that are supposed to take up the ark, they took up the ark. Joshua, this is experiencing the impossible. And in verse 7. And the Lord said unto Joshua, This day will I begin to magnify thee in the sight of all Israel. That they may know that as I was with Moses. That they may know that as I was with Moses. The dealings of God with Joshua. Was so that the whole of the land of Israel at that time. Will gather together. Will bind their hearts together. And they will know as I was with that leader Moses. Even so. Verse 7. I will be with thee. And thou shalt command the priests. Joshua. Take your position. Thou shalt command the priests. Joshua. Know the kind of language you are to use. Command, stand in the authority that I have given you. 
Don't learn the communication of the day. Don't suggest to them anything I tell you, hear it from me. And when you hear it from me, the Almighty God is a word of authority. Thou shalt command. Joshua, you don't have any opinions anymore. You are dead. And your opinions are dead with you. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. My opinions are crucified on the cross. And the life I now live and the speech I now give is no more opinion or suggestion. All that is dead. And then it said, Joshua, thou shalt command the priests. It will have been easier to command the people than to command the priests. The priests were the officers. And once again, you, you need to understand this Joshua and his peculiar situation. He inherited those priests. It wasn't the one that raised them up. Those priests were raised up at the time of Moses and Aaron. The founder, if you like. And now, the founder is gone. Moses is gone. Joshua is taking his place. Aaron, the high priest, is gone. Eliezer is the one now in charge of these other priests. And now it says, you will command the priests. You know, when you inherit some workers, you inherit some leaders... And you are not the one that raised them up. You're very careful. In fact, if you're not careful, they try to show you if they give the lion in them an upper hand, an upper hand, rather than the lamb in them, an upper hand, they will show you that, hey, come on here. Who are workers and leaders under Moses, and you have just come. And you're using a commanding tone like that. Who do you think you are? But you see, the Lord said, Joshua, you will experience the impossible. And therefore you will command the priests that bear the ark of the covenant saying, When ye are come to the brink of the water of Jordan, ye shall stand still in Jordan. And they were told in verse 9, And Joshua said unto the children of Israel, Come hither and hear the word of the Lord your God. Not come here and hear some ideas, some opinions, some suggestions. Let's think about this together. Let's, uh, you know, let's consult about this together. No, come near. And hear the word of the Lord. And Joshua said, Hereby shall ye know that the living God is among you, and that he will without fail drive out from before you the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Hivites, and the Perizzites, and the Gagashites, and the Amorites, and the Jebusites. He declared to them, expressing the improbable. You will know that this day, the Lord is going to do something. And through what he does, you will find out the seven nations that are mightier than our nation. We're going to conquer them. Exper expressing the improbable by faith. Let's look at Deuteronomy. Look at the description of these nations that Joshua was talking about. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 1. When the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land, whither thou goest to possess it, and has cast out many nations before thee, the Hittites, and the Gagashites, and the Amorites, and the Canaanites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, seven nations greater 
and mightier than thou. And yet he told them, Hereby will you know that the Lord without fail will drive out all these nations from before you. That's expressing the improbable by faith. And for you to know that as we face this year, and we're going into the field of ministry, that it does not matter any opposer. It does not matter who those persecutors might be. It does not matter those who stand in the way. Even though they appear mighty and great and forceful. Hereby will you know that the Lord God of Israel is with his people. And all those enemies will clear out of the way. We will possess the land. Where they said they had never allowed evangelism. We are going there. Where they said people don't listen to the word. We are going there. And you know what they say about other churches? What they say in other churches. And they say you cannot teach the whole Bible. The people will not accept. They will rebel against the word. We in all our locations. In all our states, in all our regions, in all our nations, we are going to teach the whole Bible. And the people are going to listen, expressing the improbable by faith. In Joshua chapter 6, Joshua chapter 6, reading from verse 2, Joshua 6, 2. And the Lord said unto Joshua, see... I have given it to thine hand, Jericho, and the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor, expressing the improbable by faith. I have given them to you. They are giants, you know them. They are mighty men of valor, you know them. And this is Jericho, a walled city, a strong city, impenetrable city. You know them. And yet, I have given them, all of them were their king, into your hand. Verse 16. And it came to pass at the seventh day, when the priests blew with the trumpets, Joshua said, Expressing the improbable by faith. Joshua said unto the priest, unto the people, shout, for the Lord has given you the city. The Lord has given us the city. He has given us the region. He has given us the nation. And we will preach this word. Notorious sinners will repent. Lion-like sinners will repent. Magical people will repent. And people that have been incorrigible by even those who have gone to prison for their crime. And they refuse to repent. We're going to preach to them. And all those incorrigible people, they're going to have a change of nature. A change of life. And they're going to repent under our preaching in Jesus name. Religious people are going to repent. The people that didn't uh, that felt they were going to die in religion, die for religion, and they're very forceful, very vocal, like Saul of Tarsus. We're going to all the cities, the Lord has given us the city. We're going to all the regions. The Lord has given us the region. We're going to all the localities. And the Lord has given everything to us. And even those religious people, the power of the Lord will come upon them. And the might of the Lord will strike them. And they will bend and bow under the authority and the power of the word of God in Jesus name. Uh, why don't you look at Acts of the Apostles chapter 6 verse 7. Acts chapter 6 verse 7. Expressing the improbable by faith. In verse 7. And the word of God increased. This word is going to increase. It's not that we're adding to the Bible. What it means is, where they didn't accept the Bible before, they'll accept the Bible. 
where they need to accept the doctrines of the word of God before they're going to accept the doctrine where they need to allow the impact of the word to come upon them before they're going, they're going to accept in Jesus name verse 7 again and the word of God increased and the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly. Didn't I tell you the Lord has given us the city. Small churches will become big churches. And where you have nominal Christians, nominal workers. Nominal, just Christian in name. Nominal Christians come into your church and there's no transforming power, no evidence of regeneration in them. This year, the mighty power of God will come and transform their lives in Jesus' name. And where you have nominal workers, workers that know the doctrine but they don't have the life. Workers that know all the principles and the tenets of faith, but they do not have the regeneration, the salvation, the conversion, the change of heart, and the change of life. This year, there's going to be spectacular conversions, even among the workers in Jesus' name. And then it says in that verse 7, it says, and many, and a great company, of the priests were obedient to the faith. What a great miracle. A great company. A great company. Of the priests were obedient to the faith. Expressing the improbable by faith. Point number two. Expecting the incredible. Expecting the incredible by faith. Joshua chapter 3 and we're reading from verse 11 at joshua chapter 3 verse 11 behold the ark of the covenant of the lord of all the earth passes over before you into jordan now therefore take you 12 men out of the tribes of israel out of every tribe a man and it shall come to pass as soon as the soles of your feet of the feet of the priests shall that bear the ark of the ark of the lord the lord of all the earth shall rest in the waters of jordan that the waters of jordan shall be cut off expecting a miracle expecting the incredible expecting something unheard of expecting something that we have not seen for the last five years 10 years 20 years 30 years 40 years because the last time something that is similar to this happened was at the time of the red sea when the children of Israel were by the Red Sea. And since that time, no other sea had ever been parted in two. And here comes Joshua. After all, the Lord had said, the people will know. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. And Moses had a Red Sea before him. And then here we are that we also have, I'm talking about Joshua, the Jordan before us. And since he said, as I was with him, I will be with you. I should be able to then expect the incredible by faith. As you think about that, you think about the supports who are ministering today. And you think about the apostles in Jerusalem. And you think about the opposition. And you think about the law of the land. Didn't we tell you, you should not preach the gospel in this place? And have they told you in your region? Have they told you in your village? Have they told you in your city? Have they told you in your nation? Didn't you tell you that you cannot preach this holiness? This sanctification in this place? Didn't we tell you? 
that you cannot have this kind of authority in this place. And then they said, we rather be God than man. All right, then the battle line is drawn. They drew the battle line against those apostles when it's in condition today. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you, Joshua. And what I did through Moses, I will do through you. That's why he expected the incredible by faith. Come back to the apostles. And they went everywhere and they preached the word. The Lord walking with them, confirming the word with signs following. And the time came when those Sanhedrin people, they called them, they said, You have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine. We're going to fill every city, every town, every village with this message of salvation this message of sanctification this message of the power of god changing the life of every man we're going to fill this city this country this continent with the message of life and with the message of holiness and righteousness a better amen, amen. because as he was with the apostles so he will be with us and then you can express the improbable by faith and then you can expect expect the incredible by faith we come back to joshua joshua chapter 3 verse 13 in joshua 3 verse 13 and it shall come to pass as soon as the soles of the feet of the priests that bear the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, shall rest in the waters of Jordan, that the waters of Jordan shall be cut off from the waters that come down from above, and they shall stand upon and keep it will happen. I said it will happen. Yeah. Uh, you know, a, a lot of things to think are incredible. Incredible. Is it not incredible to you that God will raise Christ from the dead? And yet it happened. And Jesus expressed that incredible, improbable thing. And he expected it. As Jonah was in the belly of the whale for three days and three nights. Even so shall it be of the Son of Man, the incredible, the improbable, the impossible. He expected it by faith. And then he said unto his own disciples, which in Jerusalem, until ye be endued with power from on high, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, wait, Lord, in Jerusalem, where you told us about, and we saw you have been crucified there, and these people are determined that they are not going to have anything with this Christ, and you'll be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in Judea, where they rejected you, and in Samaria. Where they have syncretic religion. Where they, they are just saying we are also the descendants of Abraham and Jacob. And yet, they are following syncretic religion. Salvation is of the Jews you worship. You know not what Jesus told the Samaritan woman. And Jesus said, ye shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, in Judea, and in Samaria. And then unto the uttermost part of the earth. These are fishermen. These were people that didn't have enough education. Neither did they have enough training. And yet Jesus said, you're going to be witnesses unto me to the end, the uttermost part of the earth. And you know, sometimes when we, uh, the Lord leads uh, me as a generous representative to call upon you. And I say that, please come. You're going to be a missionary in this other nation. Then you say, uh, Pastor, I, I never want to decline or say no to anything. You say, I just want to tell you 
my background. Because all these university people are there. And we have some of these uh, people that are lecturers and heads of department. And heads of the department of linguistics. And they know all these languages. Why don't you, why don't you point to them? Why don't you think about them? I, I'm not declining. I'm just saying that, you know, I'm just an illiterate and I know nothing. Even the English language we are talking here, I can barely talk it. I can barely say it correctly. And then you're picking on me to the uttermost part of the earth. Why don't you send me to a neighboring region here so that if I fail, you'll be able to drag me back quickly back to the headquarters. Why are you sending me to a nation that is far away? We're expecting the impossible and credible this year. And when the call comes to you, you don't think about who you are, what you are, where you have been, what you have done, what you are able to do, what you are not able to do. Because this day, there is the possibility in your life of expecting, expecting the incredible by faith. And so he told them, you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem. And in Judea and in Samaria, and then unto the uttermost part of the earth, we're going to do it. I said, We're going to do it. And as we look at Romans chapter 4, expecting the incredible by faith. In Romans chapter 4, verse 19, Romans 4, verse 19, and be not weak in faith. He considered not his own body. You consider not your own ignorance, your own illiteracy, your own lack of ability. Then you are able to expect the incredible that God can save a whole city through you. He can save a whole nation through you. And he can save the whole continent through you. And you do not, you do not express fear or unbelief. But you know that the Lord is able to do all things. And because he's able to do all things, you are able to expect in this new year the incredible. And it will happen. He considered not his own body. Considering it not. Is somebody now dead? Now dead. You understand? And you know there are times, let's say for example, um, you, you went to school and you graduated and you came out of school about 15 years ago. About 20 years ago. And now the Lord is calling you. And he's sending you to a place where uh, maybe they are not speaking the languages you know there. It's another language they're speaking. And if you go to that nation, uh, the implication is that you need to pick up the books again and pick up uh, the and pick up the grammar, the syntax, and everything again, and begin to look at all the conjugations of, of this new language. And then you say, uh, GS, <laughs> please, do you know what you are doing? You're sending me to a place, my brain is already dead. Even with difficulty, I read this English Bible. And pastor, I will tell you now, I, sometimes I read one sentence, I read it two times, I repeat it, and then I wake up and say, what am I reading? And now you're sending me to a nation when my brain is dead. He considered not his somebody now dead. You do not consider that part of your life, that part of you that appears dead. You say, yes, Lord, I'm expecting the incredible by faith. I'm going to that land. I'm going to that city. I'm going to that nation. I'm going to that location. And whatever it is, I'm going to overcome in Jesus' name. And you will overcome. In that verse 19, and being not weak in faith, he considered not a somebody now dead when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. Another thing, Pastor, I, I will go anywhere. But I'm, I'm thinking about my wife. She, she is a submissive sister, a submissive woman, a submissive wife. 
And she is consecrated. But you know, pastor, I married before I became a Christian. If I had known that there will be a great ministry like this for me. And I would need a supportive wife. I would have, you know, I, I didn't know about prayer. You know, I just, as a young man, I just got my, I didn't know what the future held. And I would go anywhere, Pastor. But you know, in many of these countries, the women are more than the men. And if you send me to this place, I'll go anywhere. But my wife. She can, I, I tried. Since I became a Christian, now I knew the importance of Bible, concordance, Bible dictionary, commentary, everything. I tried to get my wife to begin to study. And it was it's an impossible task. Her brain is... Pastor, don't tell her. Her brain is dead. And so, I would have said, Pastor, I will go immediately. But, you understand, Pastor, I'm willing. But... Am I going to go with my wife? And she is going to be the leader of the women in that place. Expecting the incredible by faith. That Abraham considered not in some body now dead. Neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. That she do not consider here is my weakness. Here is her shortcoming. And because of my weakness, plus her short coming, joined together, it's impossible. That's why we came here to experience the impossible. This day will experience it. And then in verse 20, verse 20, it tells us, it staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. It staggered not. What does it mean to stagger? If you've seen a drunk man before, a man, a drunkard, and he staggers, then you understand. And you know there are people like that, they stagger because of unbelief. Their walk is no more regular. Their language is no more regular. And their thinking is no more regular. Something is disturbing their mind. There's an incredible thing, an improbable thing, an impossible thing confronting them. And because they do not have the faith in this God of the impossible, the God that does incredible things, and they're thinking about the, this tiger, this tiger. And they say, how will I do this? What is this new assignment? How can I go this way? It's, I came to enjoy the Congress no you didn't come to enjoy congress who comes who enjoys who comes to enjoy training as the athlete under the coach athlete are you enjoying the training under the coach no we don't enjoy training we come to drill ourselves and then after the training then we're told to go to the field and the coach is there with the whistle and he wants to blow the whistle. And he wants to say, get ready to go. That, that's why we came to Congress. We didn't come to Congress to enjoy Congress. Enjoying Congress. What do you mean? He considered not his somebody now dead. And then he got enough you know, training. And he said, yes, Lord, I'm going at it. And then it says, being not weak in faith. He was not staggering. It's wrong belief. But he was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And being fully persuaded. Thank God we are fully persuaded. I said we are fully persuaded. And being fully persuaded that what he has promised, he was able also to perform. The Lord will do it. Number one, expressing the improbable by faith. Number two. Expecting the incredible by faith. Number three, experiencing the impossible by faith. Let's come to Joshua chapter 3 verse 14. Joshua chapter 3 verse 14. And it came to pass when the people removed from their tents to pass over Jordan. And the priests bearing the ark of the covenant before the people. And as they that 
bear the ark were come unto Jordan and the feet of the priests that bear the ark were dipped in the brim of the water for Jordan overflows all its banks all the time of the harvest that the water which came down from above stood and rose up upon an heap very far from the city Adam that is beside Zaretan. And those that came down toward the sea of the plain, even the salt sea failed and were cut off. The waters will be cut off. Amen. What stands between us and possessing the land? What stands between us and catching the nations for the Lord? What stands between us? And the successful evangelization of the city, of the region, of the state, of the nation. Anything standing between us and the success and the accomplishment. Everything will be cleared out of the way in Jesus' name. But do you see how it happened? When the priests that were bearing the ark, carrying the ark, when they moved on and their feet stepped, on the brink of the water. That's when it was cut off. While they were staying away. Expecting the miracle to happen. Before they move. Expecting the, themselves to have the success. Before they submitted. You know there are people that wait and wait. I'll do my part. When God divides River Jordan. I will move on. And step in there when I see that God is at work. You'll wait indefinitely. But you see, you are bearing Christ. Symbolized by the ark. And you have, you fix your eyes on Christ. Symbolized by the ark. And then he told you, carry the ark. You're a priest of the Lord. A chosen generation. A royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Carry the ark and you take the first step and step on that difficulty, on that sea, and then that sea will part. They were told in that chapter 3. Now verse 17. And the priest that bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord stood firm. They remained there. Stood firm. They looked at the heap of water on this side standing still there. And they looked at the other side flowing away. And they stood still. And there was no fear in them. What if this heap of water will just fall down and then bury us in the watery grave? No. Remember once again, there's fear and faith in every heart. If you starve the fear, it will die. If you feed the faith, it will leave. Remember once again, there is a Judas and a John in every heart, if you starve the Judas, it will die. And then if you feed the John, then it will live. It will grow. And the Lord is saying, it is when you carry that ark. And then you move on. Expecting the improbable. Expressing the improbable. And then you are expecting the incredible. And then now you experience the impossible. That's what the Lord is calling you to do. That by faith you'll stand up and say, yes, Lord, everything you say, I may not know. I may not see how the sea will be divided. I, do not, I may not see. I may not know what method you are going to use. But Lord, we're going to stand at the brink of that sea. And it is when you do that. You then have the experience of the impossible in your life. It will happen in Jesus' name. But you know you have to move forward first. In fact, if you come back to Exodus chapter 14. Exodus 
chapter 14. And I'm reading there from verse 21. Exodus chapter 14, verse 21. Whenever there is a formidable barrier, a great barrier before you, and then there's that barrier standing between you and the goal, standing between you and the accomplishment, standing between you and the place the Lord has called you to, is when you move on and you move forward in faith, by faith. That's when God accomplishes what he has said he will accomplish. Exodus 14 verse 21. And Moses stretched out his sand over the sea. And the Lord caused the sea to go back by strong east wind all that night. And made the sea dry land. And the waters were divided. The same thing that happened at the time of the Red Sea. When they were confronted in their journey by this great impassable river and sea. The same miracle that took place, that same miracle now has taken place for Jordan. And the Lord divided river Jordan before them just like he did for Moses at the Red Sea. God is a faithful God. I said we can depend on this God. Because he had said, as I was with Moses, so will I be with you. And see, he has proved what he said. As he was with Moses by the Red Sea, so he is now with Joshua at River Jordan. And River Jordan was parted in two. In verse 22, and the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left and the Egyptians pursued and went in after them to the midst of the sea and all Pharaoh, all Pharaoh's horses and chariots and horsemen. Wait there, wait here for a moment. You know, I, I, did you did you listen to you know the Bible study the other time? Maybe not, or maybe Sunday worship or whatever. I think a Monday Bible, and I told you that it takes it takes effort, it takes planning, it takes courage for sinners to sin. You, you think that it's only Christians that have to have courage? Sinners also need courage for a person to join a cult and to see that this is danger and to see that the other cult can harm him and kill him and stop his life and stop his education. Just die before getting out of school, before getting married. Before having children, before laying any blood down, before building anything in life, and for a little child, a teenager, to join a gang like that, a cult like it takes courage. And for a little child, a student, to stand up before a lecturer and say, Lecturer, mind your words will deal with you. It takes courage to sin, it takes courage to do evil. Look at these, uh, the chariots of Pharaoh. Instead of this sea, this is dangerous. God divided the Red Sea. Pharaoh, don't you remember that Moses said, All right, you will see. And the firstborn in every family in Egypt, the firstborn died. After that experience, these people again, the children of Israel were going on and God said, stretch your rod and divide the sea. And then they were moving on and the people said, we are not afraid. If, uh, you know, the Red Sea is open, then we too will move on. I'm telling you, it takes courage for, you know, all these uh, people to do that. And sometimes we look at our cities. But it takes courage for those people sleeping under the bridge. And then they come near your car and they say, hey, stop there. What's your money? I have no money. Okay, give me your cell phone. 
I did not know the man. And the man might be a military man. Who, do they care? Sinners have courage. Now, the question is, if sinners have courage, how about the saints? How about you? Young people that have not gone to military school. Young people that have not gone to any training in the military. They have courage. Illiterates on the street. They have courage. And the people that want to snatch your car, they have courage. You have Christ. You have the Holy Ghost. You have the promises of the word of God. You have the everlasting arms under you. You have the protection of God. The hand that holds the whole universe is holding you. And the people that don't have anything, they have courage. Where are you? You have courage today. Yeah. And so these unbelievers, but you know, the courage of the unbelievers will destroy them. They don't understand. If you don't understand spiritual principles and you say you have courage, and your courage is not originating, from God, from the source, from the foundation, spiritual foundation, that courage will destroy the sinner. It tells us in, in verse 24, and it came to pass that in the morning watch, the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and of the cloud and troubled the host of the Egyptians. The Lord will trouble your enemies. And took off their chariot wheels. And they drove them heavily. So that the Egyptians said, let us flee. It's too late, Pharaoh. Let us flee. It's too late. Let us flee from the face of Israel. For the Lord fighted for them against the Egyptians. They discovered the truth too late. And then it says in verse 26, And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand over the sea, that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians, upon the chariots, and upon their horsemen. Pharaoh did not learn his lesson. The first time when Moses appeared in the land, and then he threw down his rod, and he became a serpent. Oh, Pharaoh said, no big deal. Magicians, where is your power? And where does it, res it resides in our rod? Throw your rods now. All the magicians threw their rods. Now it became serpents. And then the serpent of Aaron and Moses swallowed up their serpents. They lost all their power. Now they're going to lose their army. They've lost all the power of the magicians. Now they're going to lose their army. Because you see, if you just go headstrong, stubbornly like pharaoh and then you see that the sea is divided and then you rush on be very careful come back before it's too late because if somebody dies in rebellion what do you think if somebody dies fighting against god what do you think if somebody dies god fighting against him that's what he said for the Lord fighters against the Egyptians on behalf of the Israelites. They died in rebellion. Yes, they were courageous. Who says you are not courageous? Who says sinners are not courageous? But is that a kind of courage that makes a person to die? In rebellion and disobedience, don't die before your time. In verse 27, and Moses stretched forth a sand over the sea. And the sea returned to, in his, to his strength when the morning appeared. And the Egyptians fled against it. And the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. The Lord will overthrow all your enemies. What I mean, all the enemies of God. The enemies that say that the gospel will not be preached. That's our enemy. The enemies that say, no, we're not going to make progress and march on and move on into the promised land. That's the real enemy. And all of them, God will get them out of the way. And then in verse 31, verse 31, and Israel saw, we're going to see. And Israel saw, we're going to see. The improbable, we're going to see it. 
The incredible, we're going to see it. The impossible, we're going to see it. And Israel saw that great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians. And the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. What he had done for Moses, now he did for Joshua. Let's come back to Joshua. In Joshua, we're looking at chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1. In Joshua chapter 1, here we are now in verse, in verse 5. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. I thought you will say, Amen. Amen. That he is as you move on into the promised land. As you get yourself committed to what the Lord is calling you to. As you say, yes, Lord, we're going to the promised land. Every place you have sent me, I am going. I told you before. When you see a letter, you look at the address at the back. You don't just claim a letter because the letter is there. But you look at the address. Is this address to you? If you are moving on to the place the Lord has appointed. If you are rising up and saying, oh Lord, this is my time. A time of ministry. And I'm going to minister every place you called me to minister. And I do it with all my heart, all my soul, all my mind. And there's going to be no reservation at all. I'm going to do everything you want me to do. I'm moving on. It's then, this is addressed to you. There shall not any man be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. As he, as he was with the apostles, so he will be with us. We'll take Jerusalem for Christ. We'll take Judea for Christ. We'll take Samaria for Christ. And all the uttermost part of the earth, we'll take it for Christ in Jesus' name. And then it says, I, I will be with thee. I will not fail you. I will not forsake you. In Joshua chapter 3. Joshua chapter 3, reading from verse 7. And the Lord said unto Joshua, This day, this day, but remember once again, is what? Joshua was moving on without fear, without intimidation, and without any timidity in the heart, and without any weakness in his soul. It's when he was moving on, and the Lord said, command the priests. And without any fear, he was ready to command the priests, declare the word. He was not afraid to declare the word. It was only at that time that the Lord then said, because you are in the path of duty. And because you are rising up to pick up what I've told you to pick up. And because you are doing it, not in your own way. You are doing it in the way of the Lord. Because of that this day will I begin to magnify thee in the sight of all Israel. That thou, that they may know, your people will know. Your friends will know. Your foes will know. And the neighbors will know that as he was with Moses, so he will be with you. And this day day it will begin to happen let's rise up and talk to the lord in prayer this day this day a day of commitment a day of consecration a day of yieldedness a day of surrender a day of telling the lord oh lord i know where you call me to be in the region in the stage in the local government, in that city, in that village, in the church. I know what you have called me to do. Lord, I am ready and I'm going to do it. And then is when it says this day. You are not thinking about the deadness of your brain. You are not thinking about the weakness of your intelligence. You are not thinking about the, the low level of your education. You are expecting the incredible by faith. And you are saying, yes, Lord, I will evangelize. Yes, Lord, I will serve you. Yes, Lord, I will work for you. Yes, Lord, I will arise and do what you have called me to do. No fear, no dread, no timidity, no weakness of mind, no discouragement, no despair. Lord, I will. I will do what you have called me to do. This day, then, you begin to experience the impossible. 
notorious sinners getting converted the impossible lions being transformed not to lambs the impossible wolves being transformed to sheep the impossible Nineveh well the king and the officers and the men everybody turning to the Lord experiencing the impossible Samaria turning to the Lord as you Philip will go there experiencing the impossible the land of magicians and the land of idol worshippers and the land of the soothsayers and the land of the false prophets turning to the Lord experiencing the impossible a great company of the priests becoming obedient to the faith a great company of priests and the false religion turning to the faith experiencing the impossible a great company of nominal christians church goers becoming converted having a change of life having a transformation in their heart experiencing the impossible a great company of nominal workers becoming converted getting transformed having a change of life experiencing the impossible stony hearts being taken away hearts of flesh being given to the people of God experiencing the impossible conviction heaven sent conviction fiery conviction coming upon evil doers experiencing the impossible persecutors meeting Christ on the way being stopped on their track persecutors being confronted by the power of the almighty God having a great encounter or the king of glory experiencing the impossible warlike people meeting the prince of peace and the peace of God reigning in their hearts, experiencing the impossible. Illiterates coming on fire. Illiterates coming under the mighty power of the Holy Ghost, baptized with the Holy Ghost on fire. Going to Jerusalem, going to Judea, going to Samaria, and preaching the word, experiencing the impossible. Lives being transformed, notorious sinners being converted, experiencing the impossible. Ruffians, thugs on the street being stricken down by the mighty power of God and then yielding their lives to the Lord experiencing the impossible difficult sinners that have been in your church for years they never miss retreat they never miss conference. They never miss Bible study. They never miss revival hour. They never miss Sunday worship. And yet they are tough, difficult, notorious sinners. And it's not hidden, but the power of God coming upon them, transforming their lives this year, experiencing the impossible. Walkers living in open sin. 
and it's like they have made up their minds that they're going to live in sin forever and they say you cannot throw me out all you can do is to discipline me but i'll remain there i remain there they come becoming converted turning around a change coming upon their lives experiencing the impossible from this day losing the carnal nature losing the carnal nature having the nature of god the nature of christ implanted in you experiencing the impossible having the fire from the altar of god dropping on the altar of your heart burning every every filthiness every chaff out of your life experiencing the impossible the river jordan of temptation before you temptations 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 all the time want you to stop your journey into the fruitful land of promise the land of holiness the land of righteousness the land that is framed with milk and honey the river of temptation stopping you want you to stop you and then god lifting up christ before you and dividing that river of temptation and you're able to pass through experiencing the impossible whatever is standing between you and that holiness of heart holiness of life whatever is standing between you and that sanctification experience blocking the way that you are not able to move on to the land of purity the land of holiness the land of sanctification the land of righteousness that river dividing before you and then you are able to move on experiencing the impossible by faith express it express it express it declare it proclaim it the god of power is still the god who is alive today the god who divide who divided the red sea is still the god who is available to divide river jordan that formidable enemy the great great river stand between between you and the fulfillment of the promise of god you shall be holy and the lord that sanctify you experience the impossible and see the river divided and move on a new heart will i give you a heart of flesh will i give you and i will write my law in your heart i will write it within your heart all my laws and you shall serve me and obey me but there's a river a river that is standing between you and the fulfillment of that promise the promised land this morning this day experience the impossible express the improbable say it out declare it confess it proclaim it and then expect it the incredible the incredible this lion like nature to die incredible this wolf ravenous wolf to be destroyed incredible this stony heart to be taken away incredible and yet you're expecting it by faith you're expecting it by faith you're not considering your body your mind your situation what you had before you're expecting the incredible by faith 
peace in the family. Cooperation in the family. Incredible. Seeing eye to eye in the family. Incredible. Working as a team in the family. Incredible. Marching towards enemy territory. Incredible. Expect it. God is still on the throne. With him all things are possible. It can change a lion to a lamb. With him all things are possible. It can divide the river Jordan. The formidable obstacle. The stumbling block. Between you and the fulfillment of the promise. Looks incredible. Expect it. And experience the impossible. He'll do it. Experience the impossible. Still God. He has not changed. He remains forever the same. With him... All things are possible. With him, all things are possible. And as you believe, all things are possible. He'll do it. Appears incredible, but he'll do it. It appears improbable, but he'll do it. He cannot fail. He's almighty. He's infinite in power. He's a great God. His power is eternal. He has never failed. He specializes in impossibilities. With men, this is impossible. For a lion to become a lamb. With men, this is impossible. For a heart of, of stone to be replaced. With the heart of flesh, with man, this is impossible, but not with God. Because with God, all things are possible. All things are possible with God. And as you believe, as you believe, the Probable, the incredible, the impossible will become possible in your life and ministry. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you because of what we have learned today. You are the God of impossibilities. You can change every life. You can turn anyone around. Lord, what seems impossible for man is very much easy and possible with you. 
to take a heart, a stony heart, to turn it around, to change it, to recreate it, and to make it a heart of flesh. Lord, this looks impossible for man, but it's, imp it's possible for you. Accomplish it in every life in Jesus' name. Lord, this year we want to see the improbable, the incredible, the impossible happening in our midst in Jesus' name. Notorious sinners becoming converted. Hard hearted sinners becoming converted. Souls and ferocious people, lion like people with iron constitution and with religious Jewish determination. Pharisees coming to Christ, bending the knee, bowing the heart, submitting, com submitting completely unto the Lord. Lord, make it happen this year in Jesus' name. Fearful preachers becoming bold. Timid preachers becoming bold. Weak preachers becoming bold. And moving on to every city, every nation, every state, every region. And declaring the word of God with power, authority and force, it will happen. Do it in our midst in Jesus' name. Lord, we believe that the greatest of persecutors you will subdue. Yeah. Every pharaoh you will subdue. Yeah. And every magician you will subdue. Yeah. And the river, whether it's temptation or trial, whether it's persecution or suffering, the river standing between us and the accomplishment of the great commission, you'll divide this river. Yeah. You will dry up this river. And they will walk through overcoming every temptation in the way in Jesus' name. This year will be a year of great possibilities. A year of great accomplishment. A year of great harvest. A year of great soul winning. And a year of moving on into the promised land of the fulfillment of the great commission. And then succeeding in the power of the Lord in Jesus' name. We express it. We expect it. This year, we're going to experience it. This is the year of breakthrough in evangelism. This is the year of breakthrough in holiness. This is the year of breakthrough in the revival of sanctification. Confirm it in our church, in our lives, in every family, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name.